It is the dominant environmental feature in all our province. It seems unending, everlasting, a bounty we can claim to provide jobs, incomes, prosperity ad infinitum. Yet today, much more than recession threatens our forests in British Columbia. In our century-long race into the modern world, we have reached the point where the policies of the past are no longer adequate. As we struggle through hard economic times, we are now putting in place the strategies by which this most important resource of all will indeed yield maximum benefit for all, for all time. As a result of the Pierce Royal Commission report of a few years ago, we now have a legislative requirement that the state of the forest and range resources of the province be assessed and re inventoried at least every 10 years. We are also required to present a new five year management plan to the legislature every year. And that five year management plan is based upon what we call a short term 20 year plan and a longer term plan which extends uh, into 100 years. We've been talking about the growth cycle of uh, the timber resource. <laughs> economically account for about half of the industrial and commercial activity that takes place in this province. The old saying that 50 cents out of every dollar comes from the forest is still quite true. But it's much more important than just in terms of economics. It's important in terms of uh, the aesthetics of British Columbia, the wildlife and fish habitat, outdoor recreational opportunities for people, grazing for beef cattle and crown range. So it covers a wide spectrum of things. One of the most important things we have to deal with really is protecting the forest land base. The forest land, of course, is a great demand for many other uses. A lot of the land is also good agricultural land, and uh, there's always pressure on the forest land to be removed for agricultural purposes. The land is needed for highway right-of-ways, for uh, reservoirs, for power dams, for um, hydro line right-of-ways. Uh, the expanding population, of course, has to have uh, places to live. So urban expansion is a, another pressure on the land base. Many of these demands are very lim uh, legitimate, but uh, they all has to be, have to be recognized and dealt with and as, we, as we plan our forest management for the future. Our basic management unit is called a timber supply area. And this is simply a, an area where logistics and transportation systems would indicate that the timber resource in that area should be used in that area and managed in that area. Uh, the provincial forest is simply a designation of uh, land areas that are best used for the multi-uses to which a forest land base is used. Uh, timber production, uh, protection of wildlife habitat, uh, crown grazing, outdoor recreation, and that type of thing. Once established as a provincial forest, uh, in order for land to be put to another use, it simply has to meet the test that the land is better either socially and or economically to be used for the other purpose. Uh, it's, a, it's just a way of uh, providing assurance that uh, when we do lose forest land, it's, it's for a better purpose for the benefit of the people of British Columbia. If we're to continue to enjoy all the benefits of the forest, we must have forest management, uh, timber harvesting, practiced on the same areas where we have outdoor recreation, where we have our wildlife habitat, which uh, is managed uh, jointly with the forest management. If we don't practice multi-use management, then uh, in years to come there's going to be more demands for single-use alienations, and that will be to the detriment of uh, both the forest itself and, and also the forest industry re which relies on that raw material. Suddenly, almost overnight, it seems we find the vastness of our forests threatened by conflicting land-use demands, circumscribed by defined management limits. For decades, we have cut into it blindly, but now, more circumspect minds prevail. If you don't involve the public and have an aware public, then you have uh, a lot more really uninformed people 
objecting to uh, forest management and timber harvesting. We have an aggressive program of public involvement in the province. We have uh, literally dozens and dozens of uh, what we call public advisory groups. Whenever there's an interest or objection shown by groups of people in any area of the province to our management plans or harvesting techniques, we encourage the establishment of a public advisory group. And these are generally made up of people from varying backgrounds and people who have uh, various desires for the use of that particular land base. We encourage them to become involved with us at the early planning stages. Uh, we seek their input and uh, by each of them, who usually all have different desires, speaking to each other and to us, understanding each other and the other demands on the forest land base, we generally come up with a, a good consensus of what has to be done. Once people begin under, to understand what is needed and what has to be done, uh, both the public and, and the Forest Service and the industry, it's much easier to come to a, a consensus and a working plan that uh, perhaps doesn't satisfy everyone's total needs, but certainly is a, is a good compromise to meeting as many diverse needs as so we possibly can. We have begun to accept the limits of our forest land base. We have begun to concentrate on its uses. But how? Now that we understand it, how will the harvest be apportioned and to whom? Well, as a result of our requirement for a complete assessment of the forest and range resource, and uh, the determination of the sustainable allowable cut available in the different timber supply areas, uh, we have had to not reapportion but to apportion that allowable cut that was uh, not previously committed and to make some adjustments in uh, that which was committed. We have a new form of forest uh, tenure now called the forest license which places a, a great deal of responsibility on the licensee for forest management and which uh, provides him with a much higher degree of security. We have also developed uh, other forms of tenure, uh, shorter term tenures, small business uh, timber sale licenses, the woodlot licenses. And in order to accommodate these, we've had to adjust uh, some of the allocations which were in the hands of the old form of license. This has been a very difficult job. Uh, one which we've consulted endlessly with people in the industry and the general public uh, as we established both the allowable cut and the allocation plan. They are in place now. Everyone uh, knows what they're going to have available to them in, in the form of raw material and what their obligations are in the form of timber and uh, forest management. So the allocation plan is now largely in place. Uh, people can plan and uh, as a result we'll have the possibility of access to crown timber cutting rights directly by many of the small entrepreneurs in the province who in the past haven't had that opportunity. And my long-term plan is to uh, eventually make up to 25 percent of the total provincial allowable cut available under what we call the small business program. And uh, that small business program is simply a, a short-term license which is available to people who we classify as small business, and that is simply people who do not have ongoing cutting rights. It provides them an opportunity, as I said, to directly access crown timber. And by so doing, their innovative uh, nature, the, the very basics of our forest industry has always been developed amongst small entrepreneurs who come forward with innovative ideas uh, to do things that uh, they have to do really to survive. So by providing opportunities for them, uh, keeping that spirit alive, I think our forest industry is going to remain much healthier in years to come. The Woodlot Licensing Program is a, a part of our total small business program. The timber sale licenses are a way of accessing timber for the small logger or the small manufacturer. The Woodlot License Program is a, an attempt to encourage small-scale forestry, that is, that is the management and tending of uh, plots of timber that can be done economically, but uh, by one individual or perhaps a family or an association, society, an Indian band. And uh, it's, it's a part of the total small business program on the forestry side rather than the manufacturing side. So what we do is set up a, 
an area of no more than uh, 1,000 acres, which can be combined with private land or stand alone if, uh, if that's necessary, where the individual will have a license uh, to manage uh, the forestry aspects of it to have a sustained yield harvest, uh, which he can harvest yearly or on intermittent basis. Forest Ministry will provide the technical assistance that may be needed. The individual then uh, manages the small forest in effect. I think it has a double benefit. It provides an opportunity to that individual. And also, as more and more people get involved in this type of thing, there will be a greater public awareness of uh, forest management. Uh, silviculture simply means the, the management of the forest in a planned way, much as agriculture means uh, managing uh, crop production for the farmer. Probably the single most important aspect of uh, the total silvicultural effort is uh, the reforestation. And in British Columbia this year, we'll be planting in the order of 100 million seedlings. Just a few years ago, uh, when I first became minister, we were planting less than 70 million seedlings. During our current five-year management plan, that level of planting will be increased to about 150 million seedlings. So we're expanding reforestation, planting of seedlings uh, very rapidly. At the same time, a great deal of our forest land is uh, actually uh, regenerates better under natural regeneration uh, methods, providing the preparation and, uh, of the site is done and uh, everything is done to encourage the natural regeneration. Other aspects of the silvicultural uh, planning that we do is to make sure that once the forest is established, that we continue to, uh, to in effect, uh, bring it along through um, cultivating it uh, by keeping weed species away uh, so that the commercial timber can grow freely, by uh, thinning the stands once they become established so that we don't have too many uh, trees uh, competing for too little nutrients or too little light. Uh, after a further stage of growth, we do commercial thinnings to uh, recover commercial timber and still allow the existing, uh, the remaining stand to thrive and to grow. We fertilize our stands and uh, of course, during all this time, we have to protect it from insects, from disease, and from fire. I think I can say without uh, any argument that British Columbia has the most sophisticated uh, protection and fire control systems of any forest jurisdiction in North America and probably in the world. My ministry has uh, three main mandates, really. One is uh, the management of timber. The other is the uh, management of crown range. And the other is uh, the management of uh, forest-based recreation. If we practice better forest management, which uh, we are doing now and will continue to do in the future, we protect the forest land base. If we find ways of utilizing uh, both species and quality of wood that we haven't used in the past, our forest industry can expand in the future. We can increase the allowable cut in many areas by more intensive uh, silvicultural practices. By searching for better markets, we can also uh, expand the industrial base. During this period of time also we'll be uh, enjoying many other benefits from the forest, our wildlife, our aesthetic beauty, and our recreational uh, abilities, capabilities, and also the protection of the very important uh, waters, both for domestic use, for our fisheries. Our forests uh, will be a very important part of our economy uh, as long as any of us will be here and as long as there really is a need in the world for forest products. In times of severe economic downturn, of shutdown in the woods, of dire difficulties in reaping benefit from our dominant resource, plans have been laid to ensure maximum opportunity from our forests for all for all time. When the turnaround comes, a forest for all reasons. <laughs>